Hi everybody, welcome to GT Coding. In this video, we will start creating this application right here using Next.js and MongoDB. So this is basically a simple application demonstrating the CRUD operations which are create, read, update and delete operations on MongoDB with a Next.js application. So this is how this website works. We have this main page over here and we have these uh, content over here and all this content is coming from a MongoDB collection. Now, first of all, we can see we have this button to add a new topic. So if I click on add topic and here we can add a new topic. So I'll just add a new topic. I'll just type Tailwind CSS and let's type a faster way to write CSS and let's click on add topic. And now if we scroll down here, we can see that we have the topic added over here. And even if I refresh this page, the topic will still be there because all this is coming from a database. Well, now we can go ahead and delete any of this uh, topic. So if I just click on delete and here we will have this confirmation and if I click on cancel, the delete operation will not work. But if I click on OK, then now we can see that the content was deleted. And in the same way, you can also go ahead and edit these uh, content. So if I click on this edit button over here, here we can see that the content is populated over here. So I'll just go ahead and change this to APIs. And let's click on update topic. And now we can see that the topic has updated. So these are basically the CRUD operations in MongoDB. We have the option of adding data. We also have the option of reading the data. And we also have the option of updating the data and also removing the data. So this is the website that we're going to create in this tutorial series. Now I'm going to split this uh, series into three parts. In the first video, we'll just create the UI using Next.js. In the next video, we will create the API where we will write the code to perform the CRUD operations on MongoDB. And then in the last video, we will connect the front end to the back end or the API. All right, so let's get started. Right here, I have created this folder called MongoDB CRUD and I just opened it with VS Code. Now let's go ahead and start by opening the terminal. So you can just click on View and click on Terminal. And the first thing you need to do is create a next app. Now before doing this, you need to have Node.js installed on your system. So if you don't have Node.js installed, you can just go to the official website and install it. Once you're done that, you can just type npx create next app at latest. And we just type dot to create it in the current directory. Right now, let's press enter. Right now, let's answer these questions. So for the TypeScript, I'll just select no and yes for ESLint and yes for Tailwind CSS and no for source directory and yes for the app router and no for customizing the import alias. So now the application is being created. All right, the next app has been created. Now let's install the packages that we need. So you can just type npm i and we need to install a package called mongoose to connect with our MongoDB database. And then we also need to have React icons to get these icons. So we're going to use React icons for these icons. So let's install these two packages and let's press enter. All right, the packages have been installed. So if I go to package.json file, here we can see all the dependencies. We have mongoose and we also have React icons. So now let's go ahead and open the application. So you can just type npm run dev and here we can see that the app has been started so let's open this link localhost 3000 and this is how the app looks right now now let's go ahead and uh, customize this so let's go into the app directory and let's go to the page file and i'll just change this to page.jsx and let's go ahead and delete everything inside return and for now i'll just type h1 and i'll just type hello and now if we go back to our browser here we can see that hello is being displayed and let's also remove the default styling so let's go to the global.css file and i'll just delete everything from this line of code till here right now let's start with the design so the first thing we need to do is create this navbar so in the navbar we need to have this logo on the left side and this button on the right side so for that, let's go back to our code and uh, let's create a component for that. So let's go outside this app directory and let's create a folder and I'll just name it components. And in this, we'll create a new file called navbar.jsx. And here, let's go ahead and type export default function. 
and let's call it navbar and here we'll just return a nav element and in this we need to have a link which is the logo so let's create a link element so i'll just tap link and you can import this from next slash link and let's tap href and we'll just set it to the home page and inside this link i'll just type gt coding and then we need to have the add topic button so for that also we'll create a link and let's tap href and let's set it equal to a page called add topic and in this we'll just type add topic right now let's add this navbar to the layout because we want to have the navbar throughout the application so if you go over here to app and if i click on layout this is the root of our application and here we can see we have html and body tags over here and uh, the children over here is all the content of our application so let's go ahead and uh, add the navbar before the children so here i'll just type less than navbar and i'll just import it from components navbar and now if you go back to our website here we can see that the navbar is being displayed over here now let's style it now before styling this let's add some styles to the layout so here we'll just create a container division so i'll just add everything inside this container division and here i'll just add some styles so i'll just type class name and we will add some tailwind css styles so first of all let's tap max w which is for max width and i'll just set it to 3xl and uh, we will set it to the center so i'll just tap mx for margin left and margin right and i'll just set it to auto and uh, this is how it looks right now let's go back to the navbar.jsx file and let's add some styles over here so for the nav element let's type class name and we'll just set it to display of flex and uh, we'll type justify between to bring these elements to the extreme right and left sides and we'll also align items to the center so i'll just type items center and now let's go ahead and set the background color to slate 800 and uh, let's set the padding x to 8 and let's set the padding y to 3 so padding x is padding left and right and py is for padding top and bottom and for this link let's add some styles so i'll just type class name and let's set the color of the text to white and let's set the font to bold right now let's style the button so for the button let's type class name and let's set the bg color to white and uh, let's set the padding to 2 and this is the button right that's basically it with the navbar now let's go ahead and design these topics so for that we'll create a new component so let's go back to the page.jsx file and uh, here instead of this uh, heading we will add a component so first of all let's create the component so i'll just go to the file browser and uh, let's go to components and let's create a new file and i'll just name it topics list dot jsx and here i'll just type export default function topics list and return and uh, for now i just type h1 topics and let's go back to the page dot jsx file and let's add the component over here so here i'll just type topics list and we'll just import it from components topics list and we can just delete this image from here right now let's go to the topics list component and uh, let's go ahead and design this component right let's go ahead and create a react fragment and uh, in this we'll create a division now in this division we'll create another division and uh, in this uh, we will have the topic title and the description so for the topic title let's create an h2 and i'll just have topic title and for the description let's create a div and here I'll just have topic description and then let's create another division for these buttons over here so we need to have the delete and the edit buttons so for that let's go ahead and create a component so we'll create a component called remove btn so let's go over here to components and let's create a new component called remove btn.jsx and here let's tap export default function remove btn and for now i'll just return some text i'll just tap remove btn and let's go back to the topics list component and here we need to import the component so i'll just type remove btn 
and then we need to have the edit button. So for the edit button, we'll create a link. So let's tap link and we'll just import it from next link and let's tap href. And the href is going to be a page called edit topic. And here we'll also have the ID of the topic. So for now, I'll just tap one, two, three. And uh, in this, I'll just add the icon. So for the icon, we'll be using react icons. So let's go ahead and type import and we will import an icon called hi pencil art and we will import it from react icons slash hi and here inside this link let's tap hi pencil alt and let's set the size to 24 and here we can see we have the edit icon right now let's go ahead and create the remove button so let's go to the remove button component and in the remove button i'll just create a button element and here we'll just add the icon so i'll just type import and we will import an icon called hi outline trash and we will import it from react icons hi and let's go ahead and add the icon over here so i'll just type hi outline trash and for this also i'll just set the size to 24 and here we have the remove icon let's change the color of the icon to red so i'll just type class name and let's type text red 400 right now let's go back to the topics list and uh, let's add some styles over here so first of all let's target this container division and uh, let's type class name and uh, we'll set a padding of four and let's set a border and we'll set the border to slate 300 and let's set the margin top and bottom to three and uh, let's set it to display of flex and justify between and now we can see that the icons are on the right side and the topic title and description on the left side and we'll also add a gap of five right now let's style the h2 so for the h2 let's type class name and let's set the font to bold and we'll set the text to 2xl right now for these buttons uh, we need to have them one next to the other so for this div Let's type class name and let's set the display to flex and we will have a gap of two. And now we can see that the icons are one next to the other. Now we want to display the icons at the top. So here for the container division, let's tap items start. And now we can see that the icons are in the correct place. All right. So that's basically it with the topics list. Now if you go back to the main page and here, if we just add some topics, let's see whether we have any problems in the styling. So I'll just create a fragment and I'll just add it over here. Let's duplicate it a couple more times. And we don't seem to have any problems in the styling. So let's go ahead and delete this. Right now, the next thing we will do is we'll create the add topic page. So now if I click on this add topic button or link, we are taken to this 404 page. So further, let's go over here to the file browser and let's go to app. And let's create a new folder called add topic. So you need to have the same name over here for the folder. So if you go to the nav bar, here we can see that we are linking to this add topic page. So you have to have the same name over here for this folder. And in this folder, you need to create a new file called page.jsx. And here you can add the code for the page. So let's tap export default function add topic and uh, let's return a div for now and now if you go ahead and click on this add topic button now we are taken to the add topic page so here in the url you can see that it says localhost 3000 slash add topic so now let's go ahead and style this so let's go ahead and delete this div and let's create a form and in this form we need to have two input fields so let's tap input and the type will be set to text and uh, let's add a placeholder and uh, let's type topic title and let's add some styles over here so i'll just type class name and uh, we'll just add a border and uh, we'll type border slate 500 and we'll set the padding left and right to 8 and padding top and bottom to 2 and now for the form let's go ahead and add some classes so i'll just type class name and uh, let's type flex and uh, flex direction to column so just type flex call and we'll add a gap of three now here we need to add some margin top so let's go to the layout file 
here for the children i'll just create one more container division and i'll just add the children inside this and for this division let's add some class names so I'll just type class name and we will add a margin top of eight and now it looks all right let's go back to the home page and here we have the topics and let's click on add topic and uh, here we have the add topic page all right let's go back to the add topic page right now let's go ahead and copy this input field and let's paste it down here and for this one let's change the placeholder to topic description and then lastly we need to have a button so i'll just type button and uh, in this button i'll just type add topic and let's add some styles to this button so i'll just type class name and let's set the background color to green 600 and let's set the font to bold and let's set the color of the text to white and uh, let's add a padding top and bottom to three and padding left and right to six and uh, let's set the width to fit the content all right so that's basically it with the add topic page now let's create the edit topic page so for that let's go back to the file browser and uh, here inside the app folder let's create a new folder called edit topic now for this edit topic we need to edit a specific topic so we need to get a parameter from the url so for that you have to create a dynamic route so let's create a new folder inside that and here i just call it id so you have to add it inside square brackets and in this you need to add the page.jsx file so just a page.jsx and here let's type export default function edit topic and uh, let's return for now i'll just type edit topic and now let's go back to the home page and uh, let's click on this edit button and here we are taken to the edit topic page now here for this edit topic page i'll just create a component for the edit form and what we're going to do is we're going to get the current topic title and description and we'll pass it to the edit form so let's go to the components let's create a new file called edit topic form dot jsx and here let's tap export default function edit topic form and here let's tap edit topic form and now let's go back to the edit topic page and here I'll just import the components so i'll just type edit topic form from components right now let's go to the edit topic form and let's add the code over here now this is going to be pretty much the same as the add topic form so i'll just copy this form from here and i'll just paste it over here and here instead of add topic i'll just type update topic and here instead of these placeholders for the input fields we will have the actual topic and description displayed over here and with that we have completed creating the ui of our application so here we have the home page of the application with the topic list and then here we have the add topic page and then here we have the edit topic page all right so that's basically it for this video in the next video, we will see how to perform the CRUD operations in MongoDB with Next.js. So if you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.